the lockdowns, lockdowns are coming, coming to an end, whether, whether they, they want, want to or not. not. And this, this is the, the biggest, biggest sign of victory for, for freedom, freedom over statism that we have had in a, in a long time. time. Now, I, I don't, don't think, think that I just start, start busting bust open the champagne, champagne. <laughs> I'll I'll celebrate. No, no, please, please do, do not, not get, get me wrong. wrong. I am I looking, looking for another big, big silver line. I'd rather make one out. It's not even a silver line. It's not even a silver line. It's not even a silver line. It's not even we have, we, have, we have successfully stood down, down. the state, state government, 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 no, you can't, can't operate, you can't, can't go outside, outside. You, can't, you can't be within, be within six feet of another human being, or they had to tell you directly. directly. Stop, Stop looking, looking, each other looking each other at each other. I'm not making that equity. That was the New York York health directive that said you must stay six feet apart. Yes, we have to remind you about you know the the buttholes thing yes if you're licking someone's butthole you're probably within six feet of them and you're not following our guidelines but in defiance the good people of new york city even have defied these orders and all over the country the lockdown is ending and i want to start with a story from my home state of california ktla5 Atwater declares itself a sanctuary from California's stay-at-home order. More parks and hiking trails welcomed visitors again Saturday, and one city declared itself a sanctuary from California's stay-at-home order as the state's diverse regions carved their own path toward reopening. Officials in Atwater, a city of 30,000 in Central California, unanimously agreed Friday not to enforce the nearly two-month-old order intended to slow the spread of coronavirus, meaning local authorities won't interfere with any business or church that decides to reopen ahead of state restrictions. The declaration was a symbolic gesture of defiance against Governor Gavin Newsom's order and the city's mayor cautioned that businesses were taking their own risks by reopening. And, and, and first of all, you go, well, the, is, the, is the mayor going to be warning them about corona in order to, you know, pay, pay homage to the mythology of the coronavirus? Or no, no, he said, and this is Mayor Paul Creighton, told the Merced Sun Star, quote, if you do have a state business license, that's between you and the state of California. That's it. We're staying out of it. The city government, yep, we're not going to enforce this. This is our and and all over the country. We've covered the stories of county sheriffs and local law enforcement saying, "Yeah, mm, uh, n we yeah, we're gonna we're gonna recommend." But you know, and I wish I wish we had statistics on this. If someone is compiling these, let me know. It might be a while before before the American history of this era is written, we're going to be able to see exactly how many instances there were of businesses opening in defiance compared to how many got arrested. I'll bet it's way more of the former. Even how many businesses got confronted by law enforcement or code enforcement and stood them down just by talking, saying, you are wrong. This is a victimless crime. Get out of my business. Now, then that, that's not how you say it. I mean, to get a, to, to actually pull this off, you, you have to speak a little status of, well, officer, according to the shutdown orders, according to safety procedures and CDC guidelines, we, you know, according, according to the Constitution, we, you know, we, we respect that what you're doing here is in the best, but, you know, we're, we're here, we're operating because, you know, I'm not going to put my, like the, the interview we did with Clay Montgomery last week about atomic tattoo, great video of his partner going, hey, you know, I'm not going to let my employees starve. So I'm going to figure out a way to be in compliance. We believe we're in compliance. So you should leave us alone. And they did. So we go now to my friend, Thomas Knapp at the daily bulletin. The lockdown season is coming to an end. Um, and and I, I came across this because he mentioned Atwater being declared a sanctuary city. And I don't just say this because, oh, hey, this is how I found these two stories and made this connection. 
but the significance of a sanctuary city, a city asserting its independence. There is so much that we see and how the governments of the world are failing in their top-down approach to this whole thing. And I think they were trying to avoid that to a certain degree. I mean, you look in the United States, did Trump set the shutdown policies at the federal level? Because he could have. And he, instead, what, what do we have at the federal level? We have, we have guidelines, right? That's it. The actual orders, everything that people have experienced for shutdowns is happening at the state or more local level in terms of enforcement, at least. So when those local governments get to say, yeah, we're not, no, 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 we, you gave us the option, we're taking it. We're not going to be a part of this. And the states, as the, as the primary heavy hand of shutdown policy, being defied at the county and local level is exactly what we want to see. I, I, I'm not. I'm not saying we won the war. In fact, I'm not even saying we're ahead right now. We're. I mean, nine trillion dollars in liquidity. All the people still out of work. All the economic repercussions. All the stuff we've been covering about unemployment and commercial real estate and all of the economic shifts, good and bad within this, but primarily the bad, the consolidation that's planned. It's what makes this a hoax. Not that the virus itself isn't real, but that these responses are in any way appropriate. Yeah, that's a hoax. On May 15, city officials declared Atwater, California, a sanctuary city, not for undocumented immigrants, but for businesses and churches who choose to ignore Governor Gavin Newsom's COVID-19 related shutdown orders. The city won't be enforcing the governor's edicts. Those edicts, Mayor Paul Creighton told local businesses are between you and the state of California. Sound familiar? I mean, there's a precedent for this. We've been smoking it here in the studio this morning. Mm -hmm. Well, hey, if the federal government decides to shut you down, pot shops, growers, distributors, consumers, that's between you and the federal government. State of California is going to say, if you follow these regulations, we're not going to bother you. They have undone themselves with the drug war itself, with this insanity. And localization, localization, localization. You go, whoa, yes, this is it. This is the authority of government being taken apart from the top down it will only be a matter of time before the charade goes away before we dissolve the vestigial institutions of federal governments of central governments entirely before governments get down to the community level this is happening all over the world decentralization technology connectedness human beings communicating with love on the internet being able to see through the nonsense and say well they, they can't enforce that well then fuck it we're not going to like, close down business <laughs> no to stay home when i could be at the boardwalk going to the, no no i'm going to the beach no i'm going to go play with my kids in the park oh uh, not re really and and business owners like the, the whole mask policy even what we've seen in the news now, a big part of the texture of the lockdowns is that businesses are putting up these notices by order of the state government, by order of the county government, in accordance with federal emergency declarations. You must wear a mask while in this store and remain six feet apart from everybody or else. And then you come to the store and everybody's like, yeah, if you want to ignore that, that's cool too, because we're not going to enforce it. We, the, we, the store or store owners, are not going to enforce this on behalf of the state government. Sorry, uh, you know, if, if we're not going to kick people out of our stores unless they're making other people uncomfortable. And this is this is like the reality that I've been preaching from the beginning. That's like, hey, you know what? You want you want to wear a mask. All right, you, you know, you know, like, and, and for me, this is like, because Dr. Mary Ruert said, hey, if you're at a grocery store, if you're going to be in range of me, this is a polite thing to do. This is exceedingly polite. Well, guess what? We just learned, uh, learned a little something from our Asian friends who seem to have had a thing about wearing masks before all of this started, right? 
and, 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 and that there's a greater hygiene consciousness, that's great. But to let this slow us down, as Mayor Bill de Blasio whined all the way across the country in New York City, center of the country's deadliest COVID-19 outbreak so far, we're not going to tolerate people starting to congregate. <laughs> Even as he spoke, crowds descended on area beaches and congregated for sidewalk soirees outside bars forbidden to do sit-down business but selling cocktails to go. About the same time, I heard a store owner in my part of Florida explain to a customer that while there is in fact a county order posted on every business enterprise's door requiring customers to wear masks inside stores, quote, I'm not a county enforcer. <sighs> That's the taste of freedom. Some customers wore masks, some didn't. Most stores I visited obviously had the same policy whether they announce it quite so brazenly or not. Americans, it seems, are collectively deciding amongst ourselves that COVID-19 lockdown time is over. Our decision isn't up for debate or subject to appeal. Politicians and their pet experts are fresh out of veto power. For better or worse, almost certainly some of both, America is opening back up. And I, I got to check out my friend, uh, Mr. Knapp's Facebook page today. He seems to be buying the general narrative of 100,000 deaths, the official number. And Ms., Mr. Knapp, I, I would humbly suggest is, as you keep peeling back layers on this, and we will collectively over time, and I understand when a big cloud of fear and uncertainty and doubt is thrown up on everyone, big splatter mess, you can't wipe all of it off in one go. Is this bullshit? Is this bullshit? Is this bullshit? I, I don't know. We're going to see the statistics come later, but uh, Thomas, I would, I would bet you are going to find that even that number needs to be revised downward significantly again. On the plus side, the economy, although taking a hit, Maybe cranking back up in time to avert severe food shortages and other potentially deadly supply chain problems this coming fall and winter. And I think that's deliberate. If anything, the powers that be, right, they're not going to let it get to that point. They're not, they're not like, they started seeing like all the food tragedy stories and Americans freaking out. And I'm not freaking out, but like righteously angry that you hundreds of tons, I mean, just absurd industrial quantities of vegetables. Uh, produce are, are are rotting in fields because the supply chain system isn't intact right now to go i mind boggling they're not going to let they they would never i mean they would never uh, uh we got some really evil people pulling the levers of power if anything i hope this makes people more aware of this there's going to be another documentary in in six months about all of this with with more conclusive statistics and this whole thing is going to be laughable and people are going to be pissed and we're going to want to know who was responsible and i hope to goddamn hell we pursue this and we find out because the answer is going to be all central governments will become corrupted and abuse their powers given the opportunity we cannot allow this to continue. And this experience that Mr. Knapp describes is so important. I love his conclusion here. But America's Andrew Cuomo's and Gretchen Whitmer's and Gavin Newsom's presumably know that their political futures and maybe, maybe even their physical safety are on the line here and that they're fresh out of shenanigan passes. There won't be any more state level Mussolini cosplay. The Iron Curtain was drawn tightly shut for 45 years. The Berlin Wall stood for three decades. Lockdown America didn't even make it to the three month mark. 
that's a good thing. It's a harbinger of hope for a freer future. We have yet to win the war, but we can celebrate the victory in this battle. Thank <laughs> you.